We are recording. Thank you. Uh, I'll call the North Smithfield School Committee meeting of March 23rd, 2021 to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Chair Lombardi. Present. Mrs. Mayo. Here. Mrs. Bada. Here. Mr. Connell. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. I'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Does anybody from uh, the community or public want to make a comment? You can either pre please raise your hand or get on the screen and wave. I see no one, Superintendent. No, I don't see anyone either. Okay, great. We'll move on. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions on the consent agenda or want to take anything off? I actually have a question about number seven, but I don't think it needs to be removed. Okay. Um, okay. I, I was just, I noted um, as I was reading it over that the suggestions, that some suggestions had been made by administrators regarding the policy. And I, I'm just wondering if those were taken into consideration. Uh, actually, Mr. Stanley is on board and he and his, uh, his technology advisory committee are, are the folks that did the policy revision. So Adam, I don't know if you would like to unmute to answer Ms. Mayo's question. Sure. Yeah, we, um, we met with uh, uh, Mrs. Lopes and uh, Fatima and um, some other administrators about some of these changes. So um, any of the notes that were referenced to the right column in that policy were taken into consideration. Thank you. I'm all set. I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I mean, it's really project to Claire, uh, Ms. Arnold, I mean, I'm just, if I missed it, I apologize. I see we're approving the high, I know we're doing the high quality elementary math. Does that take us for all the grades now? Are we high quality everywhere or just in elementary at this point? So that takes us to K through 12 high yeah. quality uh, materials for all English language arts and math. This year we implemented um, math at the middle school, high school already. We did it that at the beginning of the year. And we also implemented high school ELA. And I don't know if you remember, but um, we had written and were awarded a $170,000 grant for high school English language arts um, curriculum. It was a competitive grant and it was amazing. And even though it's a tough time to implement new programs in some respects because uh, it's the COVID year and a pandemic. It was actually a perfect timing because all of the new programs have sent so many more technology capabilities to do online learning. So um, after this purchase, we will be 100% um, in alignment uh, with the uh, legislation in the um, for English language arts and math. The only one that's outstanding is science, and yeah. uh, that's go not for a couple more years. We have a couple years, yeah. And there's other things we have to worry about science, but. Okay, well, we'll we'll, that and I think, time. and I think we uh, we met all the requirements uh, at least two years before the deadline. Is that is that correct? I don't remember the deadline off the top of my head. I well, do we, know that. Um, we're ahead. I know that. I don't know we are, we are yeah, ahead. Right. So Absolutely. this is actually a big, it just, this is a, a really step forward in the right direction with the high quality curriculum materials. And the math program tonight is um, at, at the elementary level is just, uh, you know, an, an amazing program that has had really positive results in other districts that have implemented it. It really focuses on conceptual understanding of the math as well as the application of the math and of course the procedural knowledge. So it has that nice blend of the, the three components of mathematics. So we're in, we're in good shape. Chair, members of the committee, I just wanna congratulate um, Ms. Arnold and Mr. St. Jean's because 
you know, they, there is some time left to do this, but they jumped on it soon, which means our students can benefit from these high quality yeah. curriculums, which are mandated, you know, sooner rather than just before the deadline. And it's just great to, it's great that we're not pushing the deadline, but they're we're well in advance. And I have no doubt we'll hit the science one in advance too. And again, it's, it's what a district would, you'd like to do it if you can as a district. And I'm really proud of our staff for having done that. Yeah, thank like you. Thank you, Mr. Connell. The only thing I want to add is that in order to adopt a program, it takes a lot of people, a lot of time and a lot of work to go through all the different types of programs that we could adopt um, and take your time using, you know, rubrics and analysis to see what fits best for us and our students and our district and our teachers spent you know, endless hours after school volunteer um, to do this work. And so I just want to mention the teachers um, were, were part of the reason that we were able to do what we did in such a, a quick manner. So in and, and the school committee for always supporting us and help, helping us to move forward. So it was definitely a team effort. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Ms. Arnold, we came, uh, we came uh, far uh, with this school committee from the time we were begging for just a math interventionist. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, I want to compliment you and the school committee and everybody who's worked on this as well. Um, I just had one, if everybody's done, I just had one question uh, for the superintendent or uh, Ms. Markhart. Um, on item number 10, I just want to confirm that you uh, believe that we should renew these contracts? Yes, very much. Okay, thank you, Superintendent. You're not laughing? <laughs> there was a joke before the meeting about this, so never mind. All right, so does anybody have any further questions? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, pass the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have. Superintendent? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, before I go to you, you mind if I just jump? Uh, if, uh, unless there's any, uh, no objections. I just like to jump to the senior project approval, uh, Evan Gravel, in regards to uh, the greenhouse construction. Yes. Mr. Gravel, can you, uh, you want to let us know what you're doing? Absolutely. Uh, I would like to start off by saying thank you for having me here and giving me the opportunity to present. Um, so my name is Evan Gravel. I'm a senior at the high school this year. And for my senior project, I plan to build a greenhouse on the high school grounds. Um, I've been in contact with Ms. Nelson, the department head of the science department, as well as Alan, the uh, facilities manager, or the head of facilities. And we have been working to create, or I have been working to try to build a greenhouse on the school grounds. I have been fundraising and everything will be done from me, the maintenance. Nothing will be done by the school. All I'm seeking is just permission to build on the school grounds. So, great. Does anybody have any questions? Superintendent, every, is there any issue with this on liability or anything like that? Oh, not at all. I think it's a fantastic project. And I would hope that when Evan's done, he can come build one for us because my wife has been asking me to build one for the past five years. <laughs> so uh, now he'll have all the experience that he needs. So that, that, that's fantastic. No, I, I, I absolutely would love to see this project happen at the high school. I would love to see a, a, a greenhouse uh, at, at, at uh, NSES as well. Um, I think this is a wonderful project and, and fully behind it. I have a question for Evan, Mr. Chair. Sure. Okay, Evan, um, yes. what, just briefly, uh, what, why, did you decide, why did you decide this project? So a little background, I've been working at Goodwin Farms across the street for about five or six years since I've been like 12. And I've been doing, I've been a farm hand. So I started off picking blueberries and I've moved my way up to like the ranks. So now last year over the summer, I've been like, I was doing everything. I was picking anything you eat there. So I thought <laughs> over the summer, it'd be a great idea to just start by um, doing my field work hours. And it'd be great to give back to the school by creating this. And it gives the, the students a great opportunity to have 
uh, a greenhouse and have a, a great learning opportunity. So that was my thought behind it. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, Evan, I, um, I, you had mentioned fundraising. You've been uh, fundraising. I was wondering if you had reached out to Lowe's for um, any supplies, because I know they were very, very helpful with the Life Skills Kitchen. So that's just a suggestion. Oh, I have not. I'll write that down. Lowe's, you said? Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I looked for grants at like, I think Home Depot held a grant. And I, I applied for a, a lot of other grants, like educational grants. I don't think I got any. And I think some of the due dates were passed. Okay. For sure. Thank and you. and there, there may be a due date for them. You probably have to write to their um, you know, main headquarters, but at least it's, it's a thought. But I, I congratulate you. I think this will be absolutely fantastic. And um, just as the kitchen has been wonderful for the life skills students, I think that something like this would just open up realms of possibilities for all sorts of our students. So thank you very much. Thank you. Evan, uh, thank you for taking on this project and uh, we appreciate your commitment uh, to the schools. Anybody have any further questions? Do, do, do we need to vote on this or? Yeah, uh, yes, because okay. it's on school grounds, I believe, or at least that's what Mr. CP recommended. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the senior project of Evan Gravel. Sure. I make that motion. Motion be made. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have. Good luck, Evan. Yes. Just posted. Thank you, Evan. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing this. Have a good Absolutely. day. Absolutely. You too. Okay, Superintendent, you're now up. So I just want to give you a, a, a quick update on where we are as far as bringing students back and uh, some changes that are happening at the Department of Ed and Department of Health level. So last week, we, we suspended hybrid instruction for the seventh grade and uh, the seventh grade came in four days a week. And it, it was really interesting. I, I, I would say not sneak, not snooping or sneaking around. I just happened to overhear a couple of the teachers uh, in the hallway uh, just saying they were so happy to have the seventh grade back and not be on the hybrid anymore. That it it was, it was better for them. It was better socially. It was better for their instruct. It was better for instruction, and there were no qualms bringing the students back. Uh, this week we. Uh, we suspended hybrid instructions with grades 10 and 11. So our 10th and 11th graders came back to the, the, the high school today, no more cohort one, cohort two. Uh, and again, we're just, just happy to, to, to the sense of coming back to normal. Uh, next week, eighth grade. So the announcement will go out uh, uh, tomorrow or perhaps tonight. Uh, that we're, we're expecting the, the eighth graders to return uh, to uh, full instruction. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the Mondays in a moment, uh, starting next week. Now, th th there were a couple of things that made these conditions right to do this. And this is one of the things that I've been holding back in order to end the hybrid. Because right now, after the eighth grade returns next week, we're in. Every grade level from PK to 12 will be in on the four days a week. And a couple of things have to happen uh, for that. Uh, number one, I just want to give a, a, a tremendous thank you to uh, the town of North Smithfield and Chief Chartier uh, and, their, and the counterparts in Woonsocket for their vaccination clinic, Joint North Smithfield Woonsocket vaccination clinic. So the Many of our teachers, many of our staff, and we actually extended it to Cartwell's kitchen, the, the kitchen workers and the DACO bus drivers and bus monitors had an opportunity to receive their first vaccination on March 12th. And it was quick, it was smooth, it was happy, a lot of smiling faces. Uh, a number of our, our administrators had volunteered to work the, the, the clinic that day. So again, it was just a really good, efficient, very positive experience. Our, our second dose will be April 2nd. And so with 
with the vaccinations that are getting out to our staff, with the warmer weather coming, with the uh, changes in some of the restrictions that we've had, you know, from the CDC and now uh, uh, the Department of Health will be working on taking some of the new CDC guidelines and adopting it for Rhode Island. It just seemed right now it was the time to reopen. Now, I just want to caution that it's not, not fully back to normal and we can't let our guard down. Just last week, there were three classes at NSCS that were on full quarantine along with seven, seven staff. Uh, this week, a, we, we, we've had to put a fifth grade classroom on quarantine. We're still getting notices from the Department of Health of students who have, te students who have tested positive and then having to do all the contact tracing. So we're not out of the woods yet, but we do feel we have the capacity to reopen more and bring the students back. Now, a couple of things that of the changes that are happening and we're waiting, we're expecting new guidance on this within the next uh, few weeks. Uh, number one, we expect that the Department of Health will be lifting the limits on the buses, which are right now restricted to capacity. There's, we, we expect the bus capacity to be raised to 65%, possibly 75%. And again, a, a lot of it has to do with the good practices that we have in place and the kids are adhering to, hand washing, masks, windows open. So because everyone is following the rules, it's giving us that extra comfort uh, level, uh, that extra safety level. The other thing that is being adjusted is the amount of space that's allowed between students in a classroom setting. Now, six feet has always been uh, the number that we've talked about. I mean, and again, w when I talk about some of these changes, the these are for the classroom. They're not necessarily going to translate into business and, and elsewhere. School specific. Uh, studies are showing that three feet is okay. Now, six feet had been the gold standard. And it was always recommended, but where six feet could not be maintained, we were allowed to go below that. Uh, one of the things that has allowed us to go, you know, down to five feet, four feet, and then possibly, and then into the three foot area is again, mandatory masking. Everyone wears the mask. There are no exposed noses there, you know, so it is, it is consistent, we will wear masks. We clean, we wash hands. Uh, again, I've pointed to the, the, the facilities, the improvement in our ventilation. We have good ventilation. And even now, uh, with the weather getting warmer, that's just Im improved so much more because now we can spend more time outside. We can open windows. Uh, the other guidance that we're, we're waiting for from the Department of Health is the changes in cafeteria seating which is something that has been very difficult because that is the period in which the students do not have their masks. So we, we try to maintain as much space as possible. We try to keep that period in which folk, in which the kids are eating as short as possible. Uh, the magic number is to keep it below the 14 minutes. And, and in, in our schools, we've extended into auxiliary space. And SES uses half of the gymnasium. Uh, the, the, the middle school uses uh, 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 the chorus room. With the weather getting warmer, we're looking at moving more of the meal services outside to again, uh, uh, spread out uh, uh, the students as much as possible. The other guidance that we're anticipating in, in the next week or two, and in fact, they, they met on it today, is to uh, uh, guidance around spring events proms, graduations. So we're looking at just as we're opening up within schools and we can allow more capacity and do it safely, we will be able to do this also with, 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 with spring events, including a prom. And again, 
I don't have, I'm not sharing any details. We have, no, you know, the high school has a number of things on the drawing board, but the intent is to have a prom. Now, senior prom, junior prom, we're talking about what is it we can do to have some of these spring events. Now, I've seen some of the super secret slides and there's a lot of hoops to jump through, but we're convinced in it that this will be a possibility that we, we can do. Uh, same with graduation. So again, things are changing. Things are opening up. Uh, we have new guidance coming, coming down to us. Uh, we also realize that you, you, you have to urge everybody, we cannot be complacent. The, the, we, 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 COVID is still very real. The variants are still floating around there, around there, and it's very real. And if we let our guard down, you know, we could be undoing some of this good work that we have moving forward. So while we can, we're continuing to move forward. Now, I do have a number of uh, uh, people who have asked about Mondays. And, you know, we're looking at returning the, uh, the Mondays to instruction. But what we have right now are some scheduling issues that we need to, we need to work on. We have state testing coming up, which, you know, we still have a good cohort, cadre of students who are on distance learning, whose families have not received the vaccination, who have students that uh, do have some uh, uh, medical concerns. So we've scheduled the state testing on the Mondays when the buildings are generally empty so that it is a, a safer, more open, more spread environment for our, our full-time distance learners to come in and take their, stand, take their state test. So we're looking at the scheduling for that. We do have a couple of holidays already fall on the Monday. We have a PD day that falls on a Monday. So there aren't really that many open Mondays uh, throughout the year. But again, we're looking at the scheduling and, but, but my, my focus, our focus right now was to suspend hybrid, get the students back as much as possible. And, you know, really look at uh, having some of these spring events happen and do it safely and try to finish this year as, as strong as we can. So that's, that's the update I have at this stage uh, as far as our, our reopening in our state. Great. Good job, Superintendent. Thank you. And the administration and the teachers. Um, anybody have any questions? Hearing none, let's uh, continue to move. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, section is for informational purposes. It's uh, the coaching assignments. Anybody have any questions for the superintendent? Again, we don't vote on this. Uh, it's for informational purposes. Uh, one, one thing, one thing I will add on this is that the the interscholastic league has raised the limit on spectators at the event. So we we are now allowed uh, two 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 guests, uh, two parents, two spectators for every student athlete, as long as the facility accommodates that. You know, again, due to social distancing, basically, and but. We're, we're, we're pretty much on track so that uh, um, each, each, each student athlete can have uh, two parents, two guests, two, two family members. Great. Uh, old business, fiscal year 21, uh, operating capital budget. Um, I assume there's nothing uh, to report, Lisa? Um, we were informed by Ride that we're eligible to apply for another $682,000 in COVID relief funds. Great. Um, I'm hearing that the funds are going to be restricted for to assist with the opening of schools uh, with COVID and also um, to help with any social, emotional, educational gaps that were created by COVID. That's great. Anybody have any questions on that or comments? Okay, we'll move on to fiscal 22 budget. Budget Committee, April 8th, for our presentation. Okay. And of course, uh, all school committee members are welcome um, to attend 
that meeting. And then do we have a date for the, the town council yet? Have they posted anything? Okay. Um, and I know that uh, Lisa, the, the budget committee, we have been uh, interacting with them. I've seen some emails go back and forth. Um, we're being very cooperative with them as we always have, of course. All right. Anybody have any questions in regards to that? Thank you. I see uh, Mr. Scanzio has joined us. Welcome. Um, uh, the next item on the agenda is discussion regarding the school transportation contract. We're going to discuss, be discussing that in the executive session. Um, I believe, Superintendent, did you want to say anything outside of that? No, not, not necessarily. Uh, uh, again, we, we, we've been meeting with our transportation provider. Uh, in, there, there is the facility within the contract to do a, a extension. And so we've been exploring a contract extension. So in, in that, that's, that's what we'll, we'll be discussing uh, uh, going forward. Great. Um, is there any further business before we go into executive session? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to go to executive session. So moved. Wait a minute, hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh. Yeah, for what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't think we can go in. Spencer? Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, I'm sorry, Ben can look here. No, I was just going to have Ben. ben. Yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, it does identify legal advice, yeah. on potential liability. Um, is that sufficient enough in your opinion, Ben? It is? Yeah, well, you're on mute. Can't hear you. That's okay. because I don't want to be responsible for my advice. <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion to go to executive session. Um, in regards to legal advice on potential liability on the student under the student transportation contract. So moved. Motion be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you roll call? Carol Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Mayo? Yes. Mrs. Bada? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Okay, we're in executive session. Um, we are recording. We're back in open session. I'll entertain a motion to um, uh, leave executive session. So moved. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, roll call, please. Carol Lombardi? Yes. yes. Mrs. Mayo? Yes. Mrs. Vada? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Yes. Paul Jones? Um, yes. Jones. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're in open session. I'll obtain a motion to seal the record. So moved. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. For the, uh, just uh, for the public record, we did not take any votes in executive session. And I will entertain a motion to extend the DATCO contract uh, for two years as discussed in executive session. So moved. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Scunzio. Uh, may I ask um, if, um, in your opinion, <clears throat> percentage increases uh, moving forward, um, how they 
relate to other contracts, busing transportation contracts in the state? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we've reviewed information with um, Ms. Marcotte and Superintendent, and I think the three of us feel that the uh, projected increases for this extension are fair and appropriate and are in line with, um, with other contracts across the state, and to some degree um, preferable. Great, thank you. And just that moving forward with the two-year extension, um, although in the contract, um, we just wanna make sure that that complies with the Rhode Island general laws. Yes, in my opinion, it does. Thank you, Mr. Sconzio. Does anybody have any further questions or concerns? Uh, let's roll call it. Fatima, did I catch her off? Is she did. I'm here. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Chair Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Mayo? Yes. Mrs. Vada? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Okay, um, motion passes. Is there any further business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you all. Motion.